Hey guys, what's up? Well, it's been a week since my last vlog, and I told you I would be back. So, here I am. So, I decided to do a little bit of my own vlogmas, because honestly, I mean, I can't really do like one vlog a day for 12 days, I guess. I don't know. Because honestly, I kind of feel like I didn't, I didn't really do much of this earlier this earlier in the semester because I didn't really have the time so that being said I w I'd, I'd love to get this out of the way because I think it's fun I like vlogging but I also want to expand into some other projects which I hope I come up with some soon because I'm dying to do another project but for now I want to talk about my top five games of 2018 so Personally, for me, I feel like it's been a balance of new games and remakes. Been a good number of remakes, but I'm not going to include remakes in this because that's kind of unfair. Because I mean, obviously, if I wanted to include a list of remakes, I'd do that another day. Maybe, but not exactly. So let's get started. Number five: The Seven Deadly Sins, Knights of Britannia. I'm going to be honest with you, I'm not really big on arena fighters because a lot of them are usually repetitive, like Dragon Ball Battle of Z, that was fucking terrible, and also J-Star's Victory Versus, which I thought was... <laughs> but Knights of Britannia kind of brought a breath of fresh air for arena fighters because, number one, this is probably the first time I've ever heard, or anyone ever heard of a uh, Seven Deadly Sins video game, which if you haven't learned from the vlog I did on that review, I fucking love Seven Deadly Sins. Bond is my aesthetic. <laughs> but honestly, like I said, it's a little repetitive, but it is a, it is a breath of fresh air for arena fighters, just because when you, when you think of arena fighters, you think Dragon Ball Z games, you think Naruto, you think J stars, which mm, I mean, I guess, but oh well. But yeah, definitely Knights of Britannia because personally, I feel like Seven Deadly Sins doesn't get the recognition it deserves. And after playing, after completing the game, I was like, "Fucking hell, <laughs> this is such a good game." It's about as much as I can say about that game. Because honestly, apart from the story, apart from the adventure you go on, that's all there is to it. But it's still worth your time if you're into arena fighters or if you just want to kill time. So, definitely my number five. Number four, Dragon Ball Fighter Z. Holy shit. Dude, the hype for this game was so unreal. So was the actual game itself. Like, the, the hype probably didn't even live up to the game because it was fucking amazing. Like honestly this might be the best game I've played since Tenkaichi 3 which is everyone's favorite fucking Dragon Ball Z game. Because let's be honest, what game can be better than Tenkaichi 3 where you have a full roster, you explore the entire Dragon Ball universe, like I'm talking ranging from Dragon Ball to Dragon Ball Z to Dragon Ball GT, like it doesn't get any better than that. Somehow Fighter Z you know, got up to that level of Tenkaichi 3, except, I mean, obviously it's not in the same fighting style because they got kind of old after a while. But, Fighter Z had a really, really fun story. The mechanics were out of this fucking world. But, the thing about that, if you're not an online player, you know, once you complete the story, that's all, that's all there is to it. I mean, yeah, you can do arcade modes, you can do tournament modes, but, Personally, I feel like once you complete the story, that's where the that's where the real fun ends, and the rest of the game you can just experiment with DLC characters, other characters you didn't get to play as, and so forth. So, it's a great fucking game. The mechanics are amazing, but after you complete the story, that's that's it. That's all there is for a story, and I hate admitting that because, you know, I love Dragon Ball Z games. I love the I love the extra features in a Dragon Ball Z game, especially from back in the day when you had games like Raging Blast, 
Um, what was another one? Oh yeah, Burst Limit. I thought Burst Limit was amazing. Of course the Tenkaichi series, and so forth. I mean, if there was more to the game, it'd probably be higher on the list, but sadly it's not. But that's definitely my number four for top five games of the year. Number three, Far Cry 5. <laughs> Holy shit. I'm going to be honest with you. When people lost their shit over this because of the fact that the main villain was a white man, like, <laughs> I was just sitting back with my popcorn and just watching everyone get pissed because, I mean, you think you, when you think about it, you look at all the previous Far Cry games, you're always on some foreign land fighting someone that basically runs that land. And then you take it to somewhere in America and suddenly it's an issue. What the fuck ever. But that's not the main point of why it's number three on my list. It's far from it. The reason why I put it at number three on this list is because not only was it fun, like all of the Far Cry games, it might be the hardest game I've played out of the entire series. Because any second, any time I got into a mission, <laughs> I was dead like that. Oof. It was terrible. And but at the same time, it was really fun. And also, the health mechanics, the fighting mechanics, all that was, was really different from the previous games. Because instead of the whole healing yourself when you're in danger, like you would in Far Cry 3 and 4, you, would, you needed med kits. Your health relied on med kits, which was kind of a fresh take on the game because it's like, if you don't have med kits, you gotta hide for a good minute and let yourself heal or else you're gonna fucking die. That's, that's probably what made the game a lot more difficult than the previous installments because it was just, <laughs> it, was, it was a fresh new take. It was very difficult and personally, I, it took me forever to get through that story. Like, because of that new mechanic, it took me so long. But at the same time, it was worth it. Because my thing about video games, like I, like I do with music, is that when new approaches happen, the fun reinvents itself, if that makes sense. And that was the thing about Far Cry 5. Was that it was a fresh new take, it was a fresh new story, Honestly, I'm not sure what else could have been changed up to improve it because I thought it was I thought it was quite the perfect piece for a Far Cry game. I'm I'm very excited for Far Cry New Dawn. I'm not going to lie. Definitely can't wait for that. But yeah, Far Cry Far Cry 5 definitely takes number f number 3 on this list. Number 2, Marvel's Spider-Man. Oh my gosh. I'm gonna be honest with you, I used to watch my brother play the Spider-Man games a lot when I was younger. They looked so fun, but I never got a chance to try them. And then Sony announces Marvel Spider-Man, and I thought, hey, this is my chance, and I'll get my hands on it, and next thing you know, I just cannot stop fucking playing. <laughs> it was that good. There's, there's just something about that game that just really captures my mind, because it reminded me a lot of the Batman Arkham games, just because the mechanics are very similar to that. But it was so much better than Batman Arkham. Really because Batman Arkham Knight really left a bad taste in my mouth. And I thought, if they make another game like this, I'm probably going to pull my fucking hair out. And I didn't, which is a relief, because... Oof, I, don't, I don't even want to get started on Arkham Knight. Marvel Spider-Man was such a fun game. It was so good. Like the mechanics were amazing. The story was nonetheless breathtaking. I love the story. It's probably a story that we all deserved, like probably ten years ago. Actually no. That's probably a lie for some of us. Looking back on this game, I'm not sure what else I can say other than the fact that it's it's just plain amazing. It's such a fresh take on the on the Spider Man character. And Another thing is that it really brings balance between between like the old school films and the new school films. Because obviously, if you remember correctly, after the Raimi trilogy, Mary Jane's never brought back up. 
in the MCU, you never hear about Miles Morales until Homecoming was released. So it's like Marvel Spider-Man is the bridge between old school and new school. And personally, I find that amazing because that's all we want is a reconnection. It's like we want to, we want our memories refreshed, but we also want them expanded. And personally, I think it's it's a very good concept. There's so many good words to describe this game, to describe the story. But overall, if you haven't played it yet, you need to change that. Definitely number two on my list. Number one, Red Dead Redemption 2. So, if you're surprised by this, why are you even watching this? If you're not, good. Because you know exactly how I feel when I finish that story. When I finish that game in general. The thing about Red Dead Redemption 2 is that everyone who's been waiting on this game, everyone who's a, who's a diehard Rockstar fan, like me, we waited two fucking years for this game. It was announced in 2016, and it was supposed to release last year, but it got delayed. It might have been for the best, because the mechanics are just... Ooh! The realism in this game is fucking breathtaking. And not only that, but the story, <sighs> my jaw was dropped the entire time. Like, as I got to each chapter, I felt like I was playing an entirely new game. It felt like I had laid hands on a masterpiece each chapter. Personally, th this is just from me, but Red Dead Redemption 2 is everything Grand Theft Auto 5 was not. Because as good as Grand Theft Auto 5 was, the realism was lacking. And the story was just out there. And then you play Red Dead Redemption 2, everything that I could have ever asked for is in this game. It is probably one of the best prequel games I've ever played. Just like I said about Spider-Man, if you haven't played this yet, you fucking need to. As mentioned by Rockstar, there's 60 plus hours of gameplay. Not only that, once you lay hands on it, you're not gonna wanna let go. It's a very addicting video game. It took me forever to binge it because of, obviously, my schedule, but once I finished it, I, I almost cried because this was, this was like the best video game I've played probably ever. And that says a lot because there's so many good games I've played and then I played Red Dead Redemption 2 and I'm just stuck on it. I can't let it go. I may or may not go back and replay it in the future. So if I do, I might do some playthroughs, I might do some commentary, things like that. I don't know. I'm, I really want to revive my gaming channel, but I just haven't had any ideas yet. So, Red Dead Redemption 2 is number one on my list. This should not surprise you at all. Especially if you know me personally. Well, that about covers it for my top five video games of the year. If you have any recommendations on what I should do for another vlog, feel free to let me know. And if there's any video games that you didn't find on this list that you thought were really good, let me know in the comments and let's talk. Don't forget to subscribe and hit the like. Thank you. I hope you enjoyed this. I'll see you guys later.